Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to our part two of our introduction to Kenwood Exelon's DMX 1057XR. Big 10 inch floating screen radio. Today we're gonna to talk about some of my personal favorite features. For those of you that aren't aware, we've already done part one where we showed you the back of the radio, all the inputs and outputs. This of course is part two. Part three will be the installation into a car. Let's get started and let's jump right into it. As we said, this is a 10.1 inch display, high definition monitor with capacitive touch panel. What that means is this has the same panel as your cell phone, this guy right here. There are two types of panels that are available to you, clear resistive, and capacitive touch. Capacitive touch is the higher end, of course, and this is what has it. The clear resistive screens have a screen door over them, which don't allow you to have the fine detail that this has. With that being said, this is a 1280 by 720 screen. That's 2.4 times the resolution as the old 800 by 480 screens. One of the other reasons why this screen is so vivid and bright, that they're using a new feature called optical clear adhesive, and that's what bonds the display together. Together. This reduces the reflection of natural light. With that, there's less loss due to that reflection, which gives you a wider view of off-axis viewing, up to 85%. I can tell you right now, off to your side here is an extremely bright light. Of course, it's having no effect on this radio whatsoever. As you can see these beautiful pictures scrolling across here, you can do this now using the new Kenwood Portal app on your phone, this app right here that you can download from an app store. This will allow you to transfer photos directly to this now to set a your background. We'll demo that in a little bit. Now along with pictures and stuff like that, sound is what this is totally geared around. This has wireless Android and wireless Apple CarPlay. This also has wireless high resolution audio through LDAC. It's got a big new EQ. It's capable of playing full HD videos. It has four camera inputs and switching. We could talk all about this or I could just show you it on the display. Here's your four cameras. When it first powers up, it's going to ask you to pick a language. There's a bunch of them to choose from. It's gonna ask you to set up your clock. I do recommend setting your time zone in. You can also choose to manually set it or sync it. It uses your FM for that syncing camera. This is your camera setup page. It's better to do this now if you know what you're gonna do as opposed to doing it later. My car that this is gonna get installed in does not have cameras, but we're gonna set it up as if it has all the cameras so that we can walk through the process. Camera assignment settings. Click it. Here are your four camera selections. Rear camera, obviously selected as rear. It's located right here in the back of the car. And it's asking you, is it an HD, an NTSC, or a PAL? If you're in the United States and you buy any camera that is off the rack, it is going to be an NTSC. If you're buying one of Kenwood's HD cameras, then you will select HD. Select enter. Front view camera or dash cam. As you know, you can get the Kenwood dash cams and this is where it'll integrate. However, if you're gonna use it as a front cam, select, tap where you'd like it to be. If there's an available hole, you know, you could have front cam here, here, here. That's up to you. There again, choose if it needs to be NTSC, PAL, or HD. And then a feature they brought back, which I am very happy about, is mirrored. Some cameras that you buy don't have a mirroring section, meaning they're made to be put in the back of the car. A camera that's made to go in the back of the car, when put in the front of the car, is going to report wrong. So when you're looking at left, you're looking at right, and when you're looking at right, you're looking at left. Selecting this, will flip it back to so left is left and right is right. Select enter. Third view camera. If you're going to add mirror cameras to this or you have a car that already has a mirror camera, let's say located on the passenger side, which a lot of them are now, just select that blue box there and make sure it works. There again, if you need to do any mirroring, it's located right here, so you can mirror and unmirror any one of the cameras you'd like. Select enter. Video in. Video in now can be a camera. Select left, in this case, enter. And it'll give us an overview of what's happening. Rear view camera is rear, front, right, left. Go back, rear camera message. When you put the car in reverse, you'll notice that in a lot of times it says some form of a warning across the top of this, something like the image may be reversed or some other nonsensical thing. Always displayed, clear after five seconds. If it drives you crazy, select clear after five seconds and it'll go away and life will be good. 
Parking guidelines, on or off. If the camera that you're buying doesn't have backup lines, you can select them and you can go in and you can adjust how you would like the camera guidelines to be by moving around the little box and then tapping and then we'll move up and down. If the camera you have already has these, select off and then they won't bother you. Front camera interruption. This is so that after you put the car in reverse and put it into drive, it'll automatically power on that front camera for a designated amount of time, if you so choose. If you don't want it to, you can select off. However, if you'd like to see what's in front of you for let's say the first 10 seconds while you're driving, select 10 seconds. Next underneath that is the OEM setup. This is for if you're gonna be using the iData RR or RR2. This is where you'll go in and find all your factory settings that are built into the radio that are gonna be carried over into this new Kenwood. Demo mode, make sure you turn that off. Select finish. Automatically remove this message after 10 seconds. If you check the box, this will come up for 10 seconds and go away. The one nice thing about this, it's typically how long it takes to back up out of a driveway. So while you're in reverse, this will be there and then it'll just disappear and bring up your main homepage. This is your new main homepage with adjustable widgets. You can press and hold and you can move these things around. In the top, you'll see these four boxes. If you hit that top corner, you can adjust what you want up. Weather, clock like you saw, a compass, your EQ settings with subwoofer level control. That's right, you can have subwoofer level control right here on your homepage. You don't have to dig through menus or anything like that. It's all right here. Backup cameras can be displayed at all times if you like. I'm gonna leave it default for the EQ. This is your source, select HD, go back to your home. It's going to give you your controls for tuner up and down, your album artwork. If you hit the expand button, it'll pull up your presets that you can just easily scroll through. There's 15 FM along with 5 AM, plenty there for you to choose from. Hit the arrow back down. If you tap the EQ, it'll automatically take you to the big EQ. We'll come back to this in a minute. There's a lot to look at. Pushing down on the volume knob, will bring up all our available settings. One of them is camera. Here in the camera mode, we can select what we want it to bring up. Left, rear, front, right, and if you'll notice, the left and right are located on left and right. So that as you reach out to the screen, if you're tapping in these two corners, you know it will bring up those cameras. It's something you can do without being too distracted about. When you're done, just tap the screen and it'll go away. Now there's also a big cam button here that'll do the same thing. Tap it again, it'll go away. Screen adjustment. This is your backlighting, how bright you would like the screen. Display off. This is an important one. This is a really bright screen. And at nighttime, if you're going on a long trip, it might become fatiguing because it's so bright. Now it has a dimmer wire, so it will dim automatically when you dim the lights. Make sure you adjust the brightness. If at nighttime you wanna make it dimmer than it is, turn the lights on, adjust it then. When you turn the lights back off, it will become bright as it was previous. So there are two adjustments and it knows when it's connected and when it's not. To wake the screen back up, just tap it, it'll come back on. Setup, this is where all the hidden gems of the radio are located. If you decide to change your camera settings, they're located right here. Same settings that you saw previously. It's all the same stuff. Connection and AV, this is where your Bluetooth, your devices are listed for the phones that you have paired. You can also delete a phone here. Wi-Fi setup. Now this has Wi-Fi and that's for the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. It is not an internet connection. It's just a peer-to-peer -peer network that allows this radio to talk to your phone. That's it. Displays and buttons. Wallpaper customize. This is a real popular one. This is where you get to do fun stuff like change the background. Sync album art, color. Wallpaper color, that's right. Now you can actually pick what wallpaper color you want as well as what color you'd like these buttons to be. If you're a green guy, pick green. You can also adjust the color any way you want. They have purple now. That should make everyone pretty happy as well as pink. And you can make these buttons pink and purple as well. Or just go with the brushed aluminum look. If you just wanna adjust the button colors, you have a fast key to that. As promised though, let's talk about changing this wallpaper with your own custom image because now it's easier than it has ever been. Displays and buttons, wallpaper customize. Download the app that we just talked about, which is the Kenwood Portal app. On the app itself, select the one picture choice. Then scroll through your library until you find a picture that you like. Now you may want to crop it so that it's the right aspect ratio of what you're trying to do, otherwise it will crop for you. We'll pick one here. And the top, you'll notice this little send button. Select it. 
Takes a couple seconds for it to upload. It'll say upload is complete. And as you'll notice here in the corner, it'll automatically change to that image. Go to the source you were listening to, and there you have it. You have your custom image. It's that hard. This other icon here is for a slideshow. If you would like to have a photo slideshow happening for your home screen. As you notice this cool picture of Barney here, that is located on the third dot. It works the same way. You tap it, you add photos that you're interested in, you select upload and those pictures will appear in a nice Ken Burns style slideshow on your radio while you're driving down the road. And you can take a look at trips that you've made earlier in the year. When you select home it'll automatically stop the slideshow for you and to get back to it just tap and it'll pop up. User interface. This has a beep. If you want to turn it off, that's where it's at. System, if you forgot to turn off your demo, it's located here. Software information is also located here. My guess is you're going to need access to this at some point because you're guaranteed there are going to be software updates for this radio as time goes on. Every radio does now. Initialize is going to allow you to reset the radio back to factory. If you tap that, are you sure you want to do this? Not right now. If you decided you wanted to change your language selection, it's also located here as well as your clock and time zone. So all the things that you did at the beginning of the radio are all located here in this folder. Also located here is a tab to audio. Oh, look at that. Yes. If you're familiar with Kenwood radios, it's going to have your same pop, easy, top 40, jazz, powerful rock, flat, bass boost, and user one through four. That's pretty much normal. Over here, you have all sources, memory, and initialize. Initialize will take you back to flat. Memory will allow you to program in your storage of the four presets. All sources, this has a feature called source tone adjust, meaning FM, CarPlay, Android Auto, thumb drives. They can all have their own EQ setting. If you primarily listen to, let's say, talk radio on FM, you could set up an EQ where it just lowers the treble, lowers the bass, so you don't get any popping and it'll only be when you're on FM and then if you listen to all your music on your phone well then you can have a totally different EQ setting for that if you're not that way and you'd like your EQs to be all the way across the board that's what this feature is for all sources 13 band EQ they're getting your subwoofer levels right here on your main EQ page bass extension is kind of a neat feature in that it will only allow the sub frequencies of your equalizer to go out of your subwoofer and it keeps the rest of them flat for front and rear so when you're adjusting your bass boost over here, it's not pounding your smaller speakers into oblivion. Sometimes turning that on and off can really help the system. Starting at the top, you have speakers and crossovers. On this page, it's just that. It's where you're going to set up your crossovers. You have front, you have rear, you have sub. This has the six channel preamp output. Type of car, if your car falls in one of these categories, you can pick it. The one thing you have to keep in mind about a Kenwood is what they've tried to do is make it a super easy setup or a very in-depth setup. It's up to you and how you want to do it. You can easily just come in and pick the size speaker you have. In this case, let's say we have an eight inch subwoofer. We have six and a half lower area. It's in the partial shelf, the rear deck. I'm sorry, it's a six by nine in the partial shelf. Select front, we have a six and a half in the lower door area. Tweeter wise, eh, let's say it's a small tweeter. And that'll go in and set up a preliminary crossover for you if you'd like. However, if you would like, you can come over here and adjust it any way you'd like. So if you'd like your crossover set to 80 hertz, 24 dB, you can. Tweeter gain is a really nice feature to have. What this does is if your tweeters are located up high, think of it as like a pre-EQ for your tweeters, but it allows you to turn down, as you can see over here, the tweeter. If they're blasting you, instead of adjusting it through the EQ, you can actively add a filter to the top of them and mellow those out. It'll work for a coaxial or a separate, it doesn't matter, it's just the output of the radio has been attenuated in that high frequency range. This this is kind of helpful if you have the tweeters up in the corners of the dash and it's coming off the windshield that just seems kind of harsh. Adjusting this may mellow that out. Rear speakers is the same. You can adjust your crossover and your slope. On all of these, they have gain control. And where this becomes very helpful, instead of using balance or fader to control the level of the speaker, you can attenuate down the rear speakers here. If you're a front stage kind of guy and you have those rear speakers up on the rear deck and they seem like they're just pulling all the sound towards the rear of the vehicle, turning it down here instead of using the balance and fader will fix that. Position digital time alignment. This is a perfect example of how easy you want it to be. 
If you select front focus, it'll do just that. It'll focus the sound towards the front. Listening position, if you're the only person in the car, it'll come up with a generic setting for you for front, right, all, all front. However, you can select adjust, and if you notice, they're all zeroed out. And this page, you can type in your numbers measured from your seated position. If you tap level, you can also go in and attenuate them. Just like in the crossover where it had a level control, you can adjust that same level here. The reason for that is now you have left and right control. So if this speaker behind your head seems like it's extremely loud because it's right there, or when you turn your ear, this one seems loud, you can adjust the levels of both of them independently. You may want to turn this one down more than this one. You just cannot go up. You also have tweeter attenuation here. If you don't want to use the crossover because you feel it's hampering your high frequency response, but you still want to tone them down, specifically the one right here in front of your face, if you attenuate this tweeter here, it'll just do that side. It won't do both like it's showing you in the crossover. So you can just turn this one down a little bit, maybe turn that one down a little less. Like I said, there's a lot of adjustments for you to have fun with. Now, if you've played with it all and you're like, uh, hit initialize, it'll put it all back to zero for you. You can start over. Balance of fader, it's all right here. Select center. The dual zone, which was usually in its own page, is now located here in the balance and fader. Dual zone is if you're gonna be doing any form of monitor. This has the ability to play front speakers one source, rear speakers another source. If you have a movie playing and you'd like to hear that out of the rear door speakers and also hear like say the FM out of the front speakers, you can do that and it's located here. You just choose your sources through this page. Volume offset is one of those cool features that has been built into the radios for a really long time. What this allows you to do is if for some reason you're listening to let's say your cell phone and the volume seems low in comparison to let's say FM radio, you can come into here and you can turn each one of the sources up or down down so they all play at the same level. One of the really fun things that Kenwoods does in their radios, back to that, you can make it as simple or as advanced as you want, is the sound effects page. Bass boost. Bass boost is great. Bass boost is great if you have like a classic music addiction, and I mean like the 70s, some of the 80s, where the bass just seems very dry and anemic. Turning on bass boost will help to make that sound better. However, be careful. If you start all of a sudden listening to today's hits with a lot of bass, it's a good way to blow your speakers. Loudness control. Loudness control is a feature that at low level adds impact and depth to the music. And as you turn it up, it will start to fade off. So think of it as like a EQ that is controlled by volume. Supreme, Realizer, these are there to help media coming off of something like a phone or a thumb drive compressed sound better. Realizer does one, Supreme does another. Supreme comes default on, Realizer does not. Stage EQ, Space Enhancer. You'll notice Space Enhancer is off right now because it's not not available on FM, but it's available on everything else. These are two features that are designed to work with the DSP in this. They do special things to make the cabin seem bigger and higher up. Playing with these two can give you a really unique sound that sounds way more exciting than you're accustomed to. These are fun to play with. Parametric EQ on or off. Oh, Boy, this is the new setting that we've been working our way to. This guy right here. We're gonna come back to it in a second though, hold on. Last feature is audio memory. If you've taken the time to set this thing up and get it exactly rocking and rolling, perfect, you're so happy with the way it sounds, you need to go to this page and you need to audio setup memory. Tap that. Would you like to overwrite the initial memorized settings? Yes. What this is designed to do is save all those settings that you put in so when your battery is disconnected, you come back in here and you say audio setup recall. And this will pull back all those settings you did so you don't lose all that time that you've just done. You can also lock the settings so that if someone hops in your car, they can't screw up your nice settings. Pretty sweet feature. Going back to parametric EQ, we're gonna turn that on. This function allows detailed sound adjustments and requires an understanding of both frequency and level adjustment. Do you want want to turn on and use the parametric EQ? Yes, yes we do. Once parametric EQ is turned on, select setup. This brings us to the new parametric EQ. Inside of the parametric EQ are a ton of new features. First off, you have a nine band parametric EQ. That's common for all channels, meaning front, rear, sub. Select front. You now have a two band parametric EQ just for front. Grab point one and it pull it up 
or pull it down. If you'll notice it goes down a lot lower than it goes up. Most of the time in an EQ you're going to be pulling something down and not pushing it up to reduce the amount of distortion you could possibly have. Parametric EQ means now that I can select any frequency I want. It doesn't matter. As you notice over here they're going up and down. I can just drag my finger across and then I can adjust my Q. We like to refer to this a boomier or dry but reality what it's happening is if you narrow the Q as you see, now it is going to affect less frequencies to the left and right of it. If you widen the cue, it's going to affect more frequencies to the left and right of it. This can be very helpful if you have a problem that involves multiple frequencies. That's why typically a parametric EQ is only nine bands because you can do a lot of work with nine bands. To change from point one to point two, right here it says point one, select point two, and now point two becomes available for us to use. If you select rear, we have the same system. We can come in and we can adjust what's happening in the rear. It's like point two. Subwoofer also has a one band. So if we'd like to create a bass boost, we can go wide on that. And now we'll get a very boomy sound. Go back to common. We have one adjust, grab a point, adjust point two, point three, point four, point five. We're gonna narrow that out, point six. You also have high pass, high pass shelving, peaking, low shelving, and low pass. If you've managed to just go crazy on this and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? initialize and it'll take it all back to normal. You have three presets that you can do. Select memory, press and hold, and it'll make you a preset out of one, two, or three. This is a really cool feature that's now built into these radios. Falls back into the original. Kenwin, you can make it as easy or as detailed as you want. One other feature that these have that often gets asked about is obtainable by selecting standby, holding the multi-view switch and home button, switching the crossover network mode settings. Please confirm the speaker wiring and select the mode. Speaker damage may occur with incorrect settings. We can now now do three-way mode. Are you sure he was? Yes. Now keep in mind, in this mode, front is tweeter, rear is mid, the sub RCA is still sub. Go back into our audio settings. High pass, band pass, low pass. The band pass is obviously for our mid-range. We tap here. There again, you can tell it what size you have. Or you can come over and select a high pass frequency which is gonna limit how much bass can get into the driver, and a low pass frequency, which is going to allow it to pair up with the tweeter. There are presets on there that you have to choose from. You can then select your crossover slope, go back to your tweeter, select your crossover slope is there well, your low pass stays the same as it was. But as you see, this diagram is representing what low, mid, and tweeter looks like. If we come over into time alignment now, you'll notice it's two seats instead of the four. If you select adjust, you have tweeter, you have mid-range, and you have woofer. Level looks identical. Sound effects are still available to you. Your EQ is still available to you. You can come in and turn your parametric EQ back on, go into the setup, but now you'll notice it says tweeter, mid, woofer. So it reformats the whole radio. And these are some of the new favorite features that are built into the DMX 1057XR. The EQ in this along with this new sexy screen, man, this is a hot piece. Stay tuned to part three where we are going to install this in the car and see what it looks like as well as take a look at those iData RR functions. I hope you guys enjoyed this. As usual, Fernando. On to the next one guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.